you can hit. That's the key thing here. Mm -hmm. What investment pitches can you hit? So those would be the things where you understand the business, you know it has a big moat that you fully understand, you trust the management team and you can buy it on sale. Those are the critical things to figure out that you can hit that thing. If you don't know those things, then that's a ball in a part of the strike zone you can't hit. So with regard to these Chinese companies, honey, I just went, looked hard at these and much of those about those companies was very hittable. Mm -hmm. But there was some stuff that I didn't know for sure. Yeah. And I have learned the discipline of not jumping in there when I don't know for sure. It's hard not to. Everything looks really good and you want to invest It is in stuff. hard. I mean, I'm with you, by the way. I looked at BYD a few years ago and decided yeah. that I firmly and consciously did not know enough to evaluate that company. Right. And I, I was super bummed that. about it right. because Munger was freaking out about the company. And I was like, well, if, you know, <laughs> who am I? Yeah. To, if Charlie to loves it, I should buy yeah. it. <laughs> so I'm not disagreeing. I just went through that process and decided I didn't know enough. And it sucked because I wish I did, you know, like it, it was one of those things where you can see it working out so well. Right. In every way, there's no real reason except that I know I don't know everything. That's right. that's it. And that one's so hard that I didn't even know how to start knowing everything. Yeah. It's an entire field I have no real knowledge in, you know, batteries and electric cars and stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, it just it was overwhelming what I would have to learn in order to pull the trigger on that. So, yeah, and by the way, I, we were both kind of laughing that we didn't buy it just because Charlie did. And, you know, the, obviously the tendency, if you trust someone and really admire their work, is to go, yeah, I really, I trust you, so I'm just going to jump in there. The problem is they're not going to call you up when they discover they made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, Or that true. something has changed. Yeah, they're not going to call you up. They're going to get out of there quietly and, um, and let you find out about it after that thing has crashed and gone bankrupt. That's yeah. not that's not a problem they're going to worry about. So that's a really the good point. Worst thing in the world is to buy something you don't fully understand because when it starts to go down, you know that our practice is to be ready to buy more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're afraid to buy more because you start to realize I don't really know why this is going down. I don't know if I really understand the business. All the fear and doubt comes rolling in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just horrible to be in that situation in addition to that the reason second reason was that exactly what you're saying i did not want to be in that situation where it was going down maybe i could tell why but i didn't really know kind of what a what a reasonable floor would be for that company and yeah. munger bought it at an incredibly low price that nobody right. actually knows <laughs> because he bought the shares off the market separately from the public equities market. Right. I think it was before it went public, but I'm not 100% on that. It might have just been a separate deal. But it was, it was it's a separate bill. We don't know at what price he owns it, but I know that it's way below where the stock even was a few years ago. Right. And so his margin of safety is so much larger than what mine would have been. Right. And that gave me massive pause because he could have been thinking, you know, it's already maxed out right where we are at whatever it was, like 10 <laughs> thinking bucks about or selling it to you. Yeah. And um, and no, I have no idea what he was thinking about that. He said that he was going to stay in it for a long time, and I'm sure he is. But um, but that's where, like you were saying, you were asking me last time about my confidence in the inversion, whether it was confidence and knowledge about a company or confidence in the price. And in that situation, it was both. But I think right. the confidence or the lack thereof in the price was really what stopped me of, of really not not knowing um, just how, how quite profound how good is that? That's so profound. Because if you aren't really sure you understand the business, then you can't be really sure about the value. Yeah, right. You right. cannot. If you if you think you are, you are smoking crack. You really don't understand the business and you're going to put a price on it? Yeah. That's. I mean, you can't even put a low price on it. You can't. 
I mean, what's it worth? Honest to God. So, and, and that's really actually another really profound thing to remember is that when we look at what these gurus own, you have to remember that sometimes the the information coming to the computer isn't um, information about when they actually bought it. It's information about the price when the computer decided to pick up the fact that they'd bought it. It can be very different sometimes. Or that maybe the last time they bought it was at a certain X price, but they own 80% more than that at a price half of that that didn't get picked up in the system. So You mean like through the just the SEC disclosures or something? Yeah, and you okay. just have to make sure that you've got the right information. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just thinking of Bank of America. I just was looking it up here. Bank of America is something that Buffett got a right to buy at five bucks a share mm -hmm. by loaning them some money. Mm -hmm. And then he exercised that right and suddenly had a 10% ownership. And then people would be like, whoa, Buffett's buying in at $30 or something, right? No, no, he's yeah. not. He had warrants for years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that can really catch you. And I, you know, think about this, how, how important it is to buy when things are on sale. Bank of America is now at about $46 a share as they have suddenly you know, gotten released from all these holdbacks that they had. Uh, that that rolls right into their earnings and makes it look spectacular. And so, of course, the price is going up because of Wall Street. Wall Street's, they're just, they're so short-term. They're just and short -term. They're so momentum-driven uh, yeah. for their jobs, to preserve their jobs. And um, I was just looking at, at uh, what Value Line, Value Line's a, a really good resource, by the way. They've got some fun things to, of ways of looking at companies and, and uh, splitting out companies that they think are really good and on sale and all this. And they were throwing up Bank of America, you know? And I'm like, really? They think this is on sale? And, and I find that over and over again. And these mainstream uh, research uh, companies have got to keep promoting stuff as being on sale because they're part of the industry too, hmm. right? I mean, they've got to keep pushing something out there. Who's going to buy their stuff if they... Value Line puts out a thing every week saying nothing's on sale. Nobody's going to buy their stuff. So they have to show, oh, yeah, this is this one. This one looks good. This one looks good. Playing the momentum game. All of them. And so you just stay away from that and look for the thing that you understand and look for the thing that you understand well enough to put a value on it and then buy it when it's half of that. Yes. And you'll be in such a different place <laughs> if it starts to go down. I buy Bank of America right now. We go into recession. Bank of America goes to $25. How upset with myself am I going to be if I realize I paid twice as much as this thing is worth? Or if I feel like I got a bargain at 46, I'll be so excited to buy more at 25. And if you're sitting there thinking, oh man, I paid too much and I went in because Buffett owns it and... Berkshire's sitting there having bought it at, I actually don't know, but you said five. five. So let's say five. Feeling totally fine about the $25 yeah. price. Come feeling great. Part of the process, you know. <laughs> We're too big to bother ups getting out. Ups and downs. Oh, you it's just ride through the downs. downs. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing because Buffett and Munger both make a virtue out of necessity. They can't get out. You guys realize that, right? They I mean, they can't just unload a position that where they, they own fifteen percent of the company. I don't know. They do. They sell. They don't do. They that. do. They don't do where they own fifteen percent. When's the last time they owned that big a chunk of something and they unloaded it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Wells Fargo. Oh really? Yeah, and it cratered it, man. <laughs> Wells Fargo was like getting pummeled because Buffett was like, "Ah, eh, I'm done with these guys. They're hmm. they're not honest, and I'm through with them." Yeah. That was a right. rough one. That was definitely a rough one. That, talk about mistakes. That was a Oof. mistake from start to finish. You guys, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about how to invest, hit the like button and please share the video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the button on the screen. We got a free gift for you. Thanks again for watching.